Hi everyone, my name is Rajan Sheff and I'm VP of Product for Cloud AI and Industry Solutions with Google Cloud. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the lessons that we have learned about bringing AI to enterprises over the course of the last several years and things that as you think about how to apply AI to businesses, things that you should be thinking about as well. So many of you may remember this screenshot. Um, for those that don't, this is the Mosaic browser back from 1994. Um, it was really the first time that the average person was able to see how you use the internet. Um, the internet at that time had been around for about 20 or 30 years before then. But at that moment, the average end consumer started to see how the internet could be valuable to them. And then this kicked off a revolution over the course of the next 30 years, uh, which have really changed how we operate and how we think about every application that's out there. And the reason I put this up is this is about where AI is today. We're still at a very nascent stage with AI, even though AI has been a technology around for 50 plus years. But this is the beginning of where we're seeing amazing applications, and we think that this is going to transform many, many industries over the course of the next, uh, next 20 to 30 years. And in fact, I predict that over the next decade, every business out there will be transformed through AI. And so this is something that I think we should all be thinking about uh, as we think about how we apply AI, that over the next 10 years, 10 years from now, it'll be just like the internet was to us in the 1990s, that every business will go from just thinking about the internet to having it be a fundamental part of what they do. Now, for us here at Google, this is something that we've seen over the last few years. And AI has gone from being something that we used in a few products to something that we're now using in every product that's out there. So just about every product that you know from Google is using AI in one way or another to really help the end user. And so we think that this is something that can then be applied to every product out there from every uh, every business. And so everything from how you interface with Google search to how you work with your Android phone to how you work with your Chrome browser, all use AI to make the, the user experience better. Now, over the last five to six years, there has been dramatic transformation uh, in a few key areas with AI, in particular, these four that you see on the screen here. Uh, computer vision, being able to interpret pictures and videos. Um, there's been a huge change from computers not being as good as humans to now computers being able to detect, to detect things that humans don't even see. Conversation, um, being able to converse with a computer and have it be able to respond back to you is something that's now key in things like Google Assistant, but is now key in, in almost uh, every interface that's out there. Language, being able to understand language and understand unstructured data um, is something where natural language understanding has taken big leaps over the last few years and is due for many big leaps over the next few years. And structured data, this is probably the most traditional way that people have used AI, which is taking tabular structure and being able to make predictions based on it. A lot of the new techniques are giving us better and better and better predictions uh, as, uh, as a result of that. Now, what I'm seeing is that AI is being applied in a few key ways in different uh, industries. In particular, uh, AI is being used to personalize customer interactions uh, in areas like retail and banking, for example, being able to use to make processes more efficient or more agile. Um, and so making it such that, that parts of processes can be automated and processes can be more nimble as a result of that. Spotting patterns and, tre and trends. So this could be everything for finding something in a picture on a manufacturing shop floor uh, that, that might be a defect with a product all the way through looking at, at, at uh, troves of data and finding something within that data that detects a trend that people haven't seen before. And last but not least is about adding structure to unstructured data. Probably about 90% of the data within the average enterprise is unstructured data. And AI is able to actually digest that and turn that into structured data that can be used for decision making. Now, this has a lot of benefits to every single industry, but what's interesting is the benefit to each industry is actually quite unique. Um, so, for example, in areas like retail, we see AI used to help, uh, help customers discover the right product or used to help uh, optimize a supply chain. Financial services, it's helping detect, uh, detect uh, financial crimes in a better way. And every industry has their own story of how AI can be used. 
And that's one of the things that we've been really thinking about is how do you take amazing technology and bring that together with amazing use cases to really create value uh, for each of these industries. But as we've talked to businesses, one of the things that we've seen is that businesses are still very nascent in their journey. And really businesses follow, fall into these three buckets. And the bulk of businesses follow, uh, fall into this bucket of, they know that they should be using AI, but they're trying to figure out why. Why does it really matter to them? How is it gonna really add value to their business? And then the other problem that people run into is that they know, they, they know why they need AI, but how they build it is, uh, is another key problem. So talent is, is a big gap in the industry. And then there's a set of companies that's an increasing bucket, which is that they know why and they know how, but they want to find the right tools uh, to be able to do that. And so we're, we're seeing a shift of companies going from the left-hand side of the screen to the right-hand side of the screen over time. So looking at that about how, who can actually use AI today, it's really an interesting picture because right now there are probably only about tens of thousands of deep learning researchers out there that can go and build a unique deep learning model. They're probably in the order of about 2 million or more data scientists and machine learning uh, experts that are out there. But there are over 23 million developers and there are over 100 million business users. And part of what we need to do to make AI really be that transformative technology is we need to move from the 10,000 researchers to that entire circle of being able to use AI. It's just like in the, in the time of the early internet, going from you know, developers putting up servers and building CGI scripts to having it such that every small business can go build a website. We need to have that happen with, uh, with AI over the next several years. And there are other problems as well. The use case, figuring out uh, use cases that are mission critical to businesses and not just cool, interesting things, but things that actually create business value uh, is another key problem that's out there. Trust. How do you, can you trust uh, the, the results of AI? And what are the implications of actually putting AI uh, into a project? Deployment and integration. Um, AI is only useful if it's actually integrated into the application flows and integrated into the overall workflow um, of your organization. Without that, the AI isn't going to be able to do, uh, do much of anything. And then data. So in some cases, data is very scarce. But also in some cases, data is very plentiful, but cleaning that data and finding the right data to put into the models is very, very hard. And that's another problem that needs to be. So a few of the things that we've been experimenting with uh, here uh, with, with Google, one is for solving that talent and data gap, can we use machine learning to actually create machine learning? So we have a, a product called AutoML. What we do with that is that we actually have a, uh, a controller that takes in a, a number of machine learning models, tries them against data sets, checks the outcome, then feeds that outcome back in to the, to the system. And then it keeps doing this over and over and over again, sometimes 20,000 times to actually iterate and find the exact right model. What this can do is it helps it helps newer um, developers start to utilize machine learning without having to understand massive models that are there. And it also helps more experienced data scientists be able to get uh, access to techniques that are, that are the latest and, and greatest. And so by doing this, we can start to solve that talent gap. Another thing is that we need to be able to teach the world about uh, machine learning and AI. I think one thing that I'm seeing now with colleges versus when I was in college is that more and more and more schools are emphasizing the science programs. Uh, but then this needs to be emphasized for people that are out of college as well. One of the things we found successful is a community called Kaggle, which is, uh, which is part, of our, uh, part of Google Cloud, where we've tried to bring together over 6 million data scientists and have them be able to learn from each other. And things like that are going to be necessary to, again, solve that talent. Another big area with this is the principles around AI and the ethics around AI. There are a lot of ethical implications with AI, much more so than almost any technology I've worked with in, in my career. And a few of the key things that, that we need to think about when using AI. One is the changing workflow. There will be a lot of things that AI does that will make it so that 
uh, so that uh, people in particular jobs will have to be able to morph what they do in that, in that job. And so we need to deal with this changing workforce. Also, if not done correctly, AI can actually take bias and can actually codify that bias in models. And so we need to be very careful about the, the data that we're putting into models and the decisions that we're putting into models um, to make sure that, that that bias is accounted for um, in that. And then of course, there's the impact of the use of AI. Um, you know, what are good, good applications of, of AI that are going to have the right social impact versus what are ones that will actually have a negative social impact? That's a very tough thing to try to figure out how to figure out which one falls into, into which bucket. One of the things that we've done is that we've laid out a set of clear AI principles that's, that's been kind of the guidepost for us to figure out the things that we will do and the things that, uh, that we won't do. And that's really helped us to try to figure out where we're gonna apply AI versus where we're not. What I'm seeing since we put this out about three years ago is that now every organization out there that is, that is diving into AI is thinking about the same thing. And so what I encourage you to do is think about your own principles, about how you want to apply AI, what does it mean for you, and be able to have that be a yardstick that you measure against everything that you do. So last but not least, I want to take you through a few of the lessons that we've learned uh, as we've built AI for, for businesses. And one of the things that to think about is that a lot of times when people think about AI, they think about these big futuristic things like self-driving cars. But AI doesn't have to be that. In almost every organization, you can implement AI in some place, probably in less than six months, and actually have it start to make a difference. And there are a few key things to follow there. The first is to really start with your business objectives and figure out where you can actually apply AI to meet a goal that is key to your business. Um, we've seen this with many of our customers. A company called Ocado is a, is a great example of this, where they're a, they're a grocery delivery uh, company in the UK. And what they've started to do is actually apply AI for everything from how they think about their warehouses all the way to things like customer service. And they've seen a huge increase um, in customer satisfaction uh, as a result of that by implementing AI in the right places that align to the objectives of their business and the objectives of their users. The second thing is sometimes the simplest uses are the most powerful. Um, rather than thinking about those broad uses, there are simple things that you can do that actually make AI very useful very quickly. Uh, for example, many of you are, are familiar with, uh, with Google Suggest. When you type things into a Google search, it starts to fill and autofill um, there. That was actually an experiment that an engineer did way back about 15 years ago um, in just a few hours of time to try to start to build, uh, to start to build this out. And it got iterated over and over again. But it was a simple use case that added a ton of value to, to users. We've been doing the same. We've been seeing, for example, things like translation be a great place where customers can start to, start to uh, get in uh, to this. Um, uh, Bloomberg is a great example of that, where they're using translation to be able to translate documents from across the world to give investors a better view of the news that's out there. The third thing is that you should focus in on the user experience and not the technology. The technology only is a means to an end, and the end is the user experience. A great example of this is Google Photos, where with Google Photos, even my, my in-laws uh, are able to, uh, to, and my parents are able to understand how AI makes a difference for them, because they can now search in Google Photos and get every picture of their grandkids. However, what they don't know is that behind the scene, there's powerful AI that's backing that, but they don't need to know that because it's integrated well into the experience. And so we're, we're seeing that with more and more customers that the more that they integrate this into the overall user experience, the better off they're going to be. The, 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 the next thing is that AI opens up new. So for example, with Google Assistant, what we're finding is that by introducing conversational AI, it's changed how people use Google search and it's expanded the use of Google search in new ways, much more than we would have, we would have thought. We're finding that with our customers too. Ubisoft is using Dialogflow to be able to figure out how they can actually better interact with, uh, with game developers and, and, uh, and gaming customers. And that has made it so that 
it opens up this new interaction model that, that has been really, really pleasant and, and has really improved customer satisfaction. And the last thing is that AI is really a team sport. It's not going to be just a set of data scientists. You have to have everybody involved, everybody from the, uh, from, from the machine learning engineers all the way through to the end users involved in the process. And if you have that, then AI can be successful. And finally, just one last thing, is that you should be thinking big. AI is going to transform every industry over the course of the next 10 years. But think big, but take it one piece at a time. Think about how each piece is going to get you to that, uh, that end puzzle um, and is going to create that transformation that, uh, uh, that you want. And if you do that, you can get on the journey towards that broader transformation, the broader vision that you have in place. So thank you very much for your time. Um, we really enjoyed speaking to you and, and looking forward to all of the great things that you do with AI.